All right, here's something we got to talk about. The uh, next layer to this Masonic, Kabbalist, neo-communist, neo-paganistic, satanic beast kingdom plot and objective that they want to do with regard to your beautiful children. And we're over here today at a call for an uprising. And he's going to talk about something that I haven't really heard a lot of people talk about. Let's listen. I'm going to talk about something in regards to tracking children, tracking adults, which of course is being passed or at least being discussed over in Israel. Surprise, surprise. Now, I want to remind everybody out there, those are things that can't be talked about here on YouTube. Uh, some people might be able to, every time I talk about it, I end up saying something that's considered hate speech. You know, my goal isn't to get my channel shut down, but that's what the website's for, to talk about these things, to explain it, to teach it to people, and you to teach me things, everything, for us to interact and not have to be censored and worry about what we're saying. So it's over on my website at callforanuprising.com. But let's get into this in regards to the outbreak, because here's just another C-19 garbage, which is being, you know, Push down our throat, coming to you directly from the land of Israel. Take a look for yourself. In a recent speech, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel is developing technology to fight COVID-19. Technology that we haven't activated until today, technologies that are accepted according to the law, we will activate them. That means maybe new methods that we are currently working on. I also spoke to our technology heads that they would look for all kinds of means that the state of Israel is really good at. One of those technologies would include sensors. There would be one on everyone, every person, every child. First of all, regarding children, there would be a sensor like a car. You get too close, it makes a noise like a buzzer. I don't know if this is possible. We're checking this, we're trying this, but we can, through different means, guard against the transmission of corona. The technology could be compared to what's used in mobile life for cars that warns about the danger of getting too close to other vehicles or pedestrians. But the prime minister quickly faced criticism. A cyber resilience expert told a major Israeli publication while she understood the idea in theory, it wouldn't work for humans. It would not pass any practical or legal test. Another concern, who would use the information from the censors? So here we have it, right? Calling for a proposal to microchip children who return to schools and kindergartens as the C-19 lockdown is lifted. So this is the life after this entire facade has gone on from People not being allowed to talk to each other, to be near each other, people losing jobs to robots, right? A world without meat, they could tie that into their climate change agenda, or they forcing people to eat plant-based meat. These are all things that I've covered for years, which it's all coming into fruition right now. Yeah. Which shows you prophecy is being fulfilled in this end time period as people continue to turn away from God. Then you have this, right? One of the obvious dangers to me with this plan is that let's just say these pedo chic people decide that they like the way that little Janie looks. Now they can coordinate a kidnapping whenever they feel like it because they can now track Janie wherever she goes, 24 <coughs> hours a day, seven days a week, and then they just go get her because that's how these people are. They don't care if that's someone else's child. They only look at it as, I want that. I want to use that. I want to hurt that. I want to take, that's mine. Everything's theirs. That's how Satan is. Everything he thinks, it's it's his for the taking. God, God is the one that owns everything, but Satan comes and just tramples all over it. No, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. So much so that he wants to be like God without God. And now you have humanity kind of moving in that direction. I can't even really say slowly, but surely anymore. Like phew, rocket lightning speed. And mankind is now on the cusp of doing the very same sin, the worst sin ever that Satan ever did, 
by wanting to be like God without God. And a man is going to do the same thing. And you think God is just going to sit back and be like, oh, okay, whatever. No, this warrants massive judgment. And when you turn to the pages of scripture and looking at the environment of the Revelation 18, humanity gone to pot, the environment, you see that one of the reasons, one of the reasons why God gets mad at them and is lobbing judgments at them, 21 to be exact, his wrath dispensed in 21 judgments, slowly amping up, amping up, uh, is because of this slavery situation, the, the souls and the bodies of the slaves that they, they don't care how old you are. Just everything is theirs. They just take whatever they want. That's how evil is. It's mine. It's all mine is what evil would say. And so that's one of the aspects of this whole money making scheme that, you know, all of these masons are behind. They just, they just lie about everything. All the governments, all the, all the different people in all the different industries, what we always talk about on a continual basis. And now they want to be able to put some type of tracking implement inside your child so that they can just go get them whenever they want to. You can see how in some people they will want to inject them with toxins to put them down. Oh, mommy and daddy can't protect you now. That kind of thing. That's where this is going. The beast kingdom is not going to be a nice place. The, the evil that they warrant is something that rises before God where he has to act. And he is going to match them in consequence for what they're going to do. And they're going to go there. And so I love how Netanyahu acts all ignorant. Like, oh, I don't know. Can we do this? This is not a bad idea. Let's go ahead and ship everybody's kids. What do you think? Should we do it? I just love how they coat everything in ignorance. And he's one of them, too. He's a Mason, too, which means he's had his share of the behaviors that is part of their religious ceremony that if you just read Crowley, just read Crowley and his psychopath, occultic, gnosis-oriented, wicked, black, Jewish, you know, sexual magic. They they do things they ought not to do. We'll leave it at that. Little psychopath. Anyhow, so that's one aspect of what they ultimately want to do, which is a horrible idea that warrants the judgment of God. It's going to make their job a little easier. This idea that you can stop them from doing it, again, this channel doesn't buy into that. That, that you are nothing compared to the power that they wield. This is why Christ is coming and bids people and their households to get into the ark, that your house might not be broken into and separated. You have two thieves coming. Two thieves coming. You have the good thief that's coming to steal his treasure that he's going to protect and love and care for. Jesus was always appropriate with people. Jesus was always appropriate with children. You know why? Because he's good. You don't have to worry about your kid in the presence of Jesus. He's not like human beings, though he is a human being. He's good. You have this other band of thieves coming. They're coming. They've made laws to come. Under this false pretense of the lie, they are coming. This is why people need to get into the ark and get their kids into the ark of the renewed covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ. You are running out of time. The more I read Jesus's words and turn to the Greek, the more horrified, friends, I become because he has very clear language about the rapid nature of these things unfolding. And a lot could be said about that, but you are running out of time if you are not in Jesus Christ. If you are, yay, then help other people by giving them a good gospel 
and just know that there's a lot of people that will be stubborn to the end and then they'll find out. <laughs> Anyhow, let's keep listening. And then I have so much more to share with you. Horrible, horrible, horrible things. I'm sorry, but, you know, we, we, we got to know what's going on. Life after the lockdown, proposals of microchipping children. Speechless, right? Yeah. Now, it was mentioned adults and children, but there's a preference on children because adults are likely to say no to this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're seeing more and more people wake up during this outbreak because people are going, this is uh, something suspicious about it. But the children, the generations beneath us, those are the ones that they're targeting for this. They know that we're not going to take the vax. We're not going to forcefully take it. We're not willingly taking it. So tough. But they're prepping the kids for this stuff. So now on to the, the nonsense that is this microchip. So while he's speaking, well, Netanyahu is speaking at a press conference, the prime minister of uh, Israel, he suggested that the, <laughs> I mean, I can't even believe that I'm reading this stuff. I can't. And I know I've been talking about it for years, but I, Sometimes I would convince myself that it wasn't happening in my lifetime. And I'd say, well, hope, hopefully I'm preparing the youth out there for this, because I'm going to be too old, the old expression, right? I'm too old for this blank, right? And it is happening. It is coming to fruition right now. And that's not fear-mongering. That's truth. You know, and I hate to say it, because I know people out there have kids, and they... This is someone and his entire organization of a fake church that you would want to hide your children from. And now they're together. How freaky is that? I don't want to cast a bleak uh, future on the children. The children are so important. So if you are someone that has kids, I'm going to say, oh, they're screwed. They're doomed. Your children need to be raised as warriors in scripture. They need to know the word. They need to be strong in their faith. And they need to not be reliant on big brother. Yeah. Those are things that are extremely, extremely important for parents to do in this time. So while speaking at a press conference Monday, Netanyahu suggested the health ministry use new technology to help Israel adjust to its new routine as the state is lifting the lockdown. That is technology that has not been used before and is allowed under the legislation we shall enact. So they're going to make it law. And it shouldn't surprise anyone who's fully awake. Stop. Did you just hear that? This is becoming law. We're no longer dealing with theory. You are now dealing with the usurping of your power and control and rights as a parent. They're coming in going, that's mine. I want that. I'll take it. That's what's going on. Do you understand this? Do you understand the level of depravity that these satanic, masonic, possessed, evil, vile people that refuse to allow Jesus Christ to transform them so they just become these living temples of filth and rot? That's the nature of sin. God goes, I want to get rid of that sin. That's the whole point of why he came to rebirth a new forever mankind, to get rid of the sin. And he says, I'll take it on my body. Like, you know, when, when your kids get the flu and they're barfing all over the place and they feel like dying and you're like, I really wish I could take that flu for you. I would totally take that horrible, horrible flu for you if it worked like that. And you know you would. Well, that's what he's done for us. Only it wasn't the flu where you feel like barfing and puking all over the place and feel awful and feel like you're going to die. He literally took the death sentence, both physically and spiritually, that nobody ever seems to talk about, that he got separated from the Father. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Dual deaths. He corrected the problem that Adam and Eve created by not listening in the garden that was started with a spiritual death, a separation from God, and then it had a consequence of physical death. So the soul peeling off and separating from the body because the Holy Spirit would have been in that temple and he left that temple and the environment was impacted. 
So Christ comes and he goes, I will take that sin nature. I will take that, the sin consequences. I will take it all. I'll take it on my own body. I'll take that flu for you, so to speak, of the sinful nature so that you can be set free. And you have this group of humanity that says, I will not allow you to do that. So it, 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 spiritually speaking, it, they rot. You understand? And there's nothing that he can do with them because he's, he can't violate their free will. He can only consequence them. This is why it's so important that people allow him to take their sins and transform you from evil into good. Yes, that is what Christianity seeks to do and to reconcile you back to God. And when you get your glorified flesh, you now have a sinless nature bequeathed to you. You go from blameless to actual sinlessness. Once you've been justified, the other side of the coin is sanctified and you're waiting for your rapture, glorification, resurrection, depending on whether you're alive or dead. If you're listening to me, hopefully you're alive. Just kidding. But this is the point of what God is trying to do by creating a one new mankind with the sub goal of getting rid of the sin. Because he's only going to deal with that for just so long. And sadly, he's going to allow for this last seven years of human history in which the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst who has said, I don't want to be healed. I want what I want. And I love my sin. He's just going to let that metastasize like a cancer. And some people will repent and come to him, but there will be that faction who say, no, I want my way. Even if I destroy myself and everything else, I want my way. That's what Satan is. And you have a whole bunch of people that are acting in the same like manner as Satan, which is why Jesus says unbelievers have their father, Satan. Then you have Christians who have their father, Yahweh, basically, in a nutshell. And every time we act in concert with his righteousness in our sanctification, you're, you, you, you are acting in your, in, in a way that is most pleasing to God because it is, it is that act of copying him. It is that act of image copying him. It is that act of doing that, which is in line with his will, which is goodness. So, I mean, you can almost sort of say that every time you do something in line with your sanctification, it is an opportunity, I'm just going to say it like this, for him to smile, for him to be joyful, for him to be happy, for him to look down upon his creation and say, oh, blameless creation, I'm so happy. But one day we're going to actually be appropriated, gifted, given the actual sinless nature, which is your freedom from the hell of the sin nature that actually opposes God. Your, your body, your mind, your thoughts, your body wants the wrong thing. Why? Because of that absence of the Holy Spirit from the garden in the body temples. But see, now that you have the Holy Spirit back in you upon glorification, when he gives you your new flesh, you're, 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 you're not even going to want evil and you're free. But see, these people don't want to be free. These people don't want the correction. They don't want the things that are in line with good. And so, unfortunately, there's that seven-year period that soon will start and will be bearing upon society, bearing down upon society for all these people that rejected Jesus. And this is their great plan. I love how they just put it out like, Oh, we should totally do this. We should microchip everybody's kid, you know, and enact laws for it. And you have to start connecting together the fact that these pedophile, satanic, evil people are just going to do these things in line with getting their way to make the evil that they want to procure even easier. That's what's going on. that this would all start in Israel, right? Like I said, that stuff you can learn if you don't know about it on my website. There are some YouTubers who talk about it. I'm not sure how they get away with talking about it. I just know my past on YouTube, how many times I've gotten hit for hate speech. 
and I just think it's maybe the tone I speak or because uh, Israel is good at such as censors. For instance, every person, every kid, and he wants it on kids first. Yeah. Remember that would have a sensor that would sound an alarm when you get too close, like the ones on cars, which you heard him say, right? But why do you think they want it on kids first, targeting kids first, right? Because they're going to get used to having this their entire lives. This is going to be normal for them because they're five years old. They're not even going to know what it is, the sensor on them. And the chip doesn't have to be something that's in the body yet. Remember, they use this stuff to get people used to having it on them, wearing it, right? Mm -hmm. That's why the phone, people pretty much, you, we hear people, the expression that people wear, are wearing their phones because they're on their phones so much. To the iWatch, right? To all these things where technology has taken it one step closer to a chip being inserted in you. Now, if this is a chip that's just on you as it like a, you know, somebody on house arrest that's around your ankle well of course this is going to prepare them for the future where they go look instead of having they're going to grow up thinking that this is normal right because they're going to have it from five years old they'll be 15 they're like yeah it's normal social distancing is normal right because the repetition of it and hearing about it just gets beaten in their head they think it's a normal reality i think that he thinks this stuff is way farther out than it actually truly and legitimately is so on that point i disagree with him but that's okay and then they go, isn't it annoying to have this bracelet thing on all the time? Yeah, it is. Some days I forget it. Sometimes it itches, you know, sometimes it breaks. Well, how about we put it inside your body? Oh, that would be great. It's just a little grain of rice. That's what they say, right? Dr. Oz, just a little grain of rice. Right. But the components of the mark of the beast are going to be tying you internally with in like a yoking, a marriage, a, a mixing of the computer ai rise of the machine quantum computers whatever like that whole thing and your flesh together in one it's not just that you get a gps like it's you know the same thing as what your kitty gets but now you get one and that's the mark of the beast there's more to it than that it's not just being tracked and followed wherever you go with an internal sensor that's not the mark of the beast it involves worship. It involves coming into the new creation and the Antichrist. It's it's accepting another gospel. It's the rejecting of Jesus. It is the acquisition of God, false godhood powers. There's a lot to it. I don't think that that gets talked about enough. Put it right in. Don't worry about anything with your DNA and the mark of the beast. No. Get it right inside you. We're not tracking you. <laughs> Wink, wink. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. It said it would be hard to do to more than a million school children who return to their educational institutions in order to ensure one student sits at the distance of two meters from another. It is fictional and dangerous. This is what some people online are saying. Theoretically, the, uh, the idea behind it, although such distance sensitive microchips exist in vehicles, it's different in humans. A, co a beeping sound telling them that they got too close to someone isn't enough. And who says it will change anything? All right. So <laughs> it's just the start, but it isn't enough. What's enough going to be the actual chip or why don't, we, why don't we all just remain in our homes and our prison cells with our cameras at every corner monitoring our behavior anyway, because that's what they really want. So. This, of course, is coming to fruition over there. Don't be surprised if this is something in America because Americans would embrace this type of technology, right? There's not a ton of pushback here, but the only pushback really is coming from people who are middle-aged and know that this stuff is a conspiracy. They know that they smell the bull crap. They've already scared the older people. You know, the majority of people who are 16 over are scared of, the, of everything that's going on because all they're hearing about is how they're the ones who are gonna get it and they're gonna die and they don't want it, all right? And then the younger people are like, oh, yeah, whatever. I'll get, I'll get back into you know, doing things normal. You could put a chip in me. And then it's us in the middle who really are pushing back. Now, I'm not saying every single person who's young isn't pushing back. Because I know there's subscribers here who are in their teens who are. And that's good. You need to continue to learn all these things that are going on in the world. But you need to continue to learn God's word. Because that's going to be removed next. That's the most important message that we can get across to people is finding salvation through Christ. They're removing God. They're enhancing technology. 
and they're making human beings dependent on technology for their God and on Big Brother to come in and save the day for their God. It's scary. So this starts in Israel. Where does it end? Who knows? Who knows? But the fact that it's being talked about <coughs> and it's going to be a law and they're passing bills, this is what happens. This is what we saw at the Patriot Act. How many times have we seen these bills get passed quietly in the night, yeah. like a fart in the wind? They just, oh, did you hear about the bill? No, I didn't hear anything about it. Why wasn't it on the mainstream media? Oh, I don't know. But here's a law that's been passed, right? Just like the HR 6666, right? Talking about how they could, oh, forcible entry. We can come to your house and give you the test. Doesn't make Speaking of that, what is this? What is Ammon Bundy talking about? Children's emergency quarantine centers? Well, if you checked out my, uh, my last video that we did earlier today on uh, solving the insolvency by injecting solvent, uh, into the parents that kind of all starts to make sense. So they're stealing everything. We've already talked about that. They're taking over. We talked about that. You get to be this for those who will be here. You get to be the sacrifice for mother earth, Gaia. Yay. No, not yay. Uh, and so they're going to take over the children and they've actually already in their crepidocious Olympics, from back in, I believe it was 2012, the British Olympics, which we also did a video on, they actually already showed this whole thing of the death plague. Blah! And, uh, you know, the singing, dancing nurses and the children in the beds and the whole plague. And then they flew in the nannies. And the, the, the Mary Poppins nannies came in on their black umbrellas. Nanny state. But it's not just a nanny state. It's that they're taking, this is this is what they want to do with the law. They want, this is in my state too, by the way. Urgency, 1 billion. Leaving soon, 1 billion. They want to take the children. Here, murder you, you irritant, right? That's how they see it. Not me, but, you know, that's how they see it. And then take your children. And look, the church is helping. So let's listen to this. Washington. I come to you uh, with extreme concern for the people of this land. And I hope that uh, any of you that are watching this, whether you like me or hate me, um, will just consider the information that I'm presenting. Um, Governor Ensley out of Washington uh, just made a very um, concerning announcement. He had a press conference, um, and it was quite an ordeal, about 40, 40 minutes long. And the reason why I think that it is um, <coughs> essential that we keep an eye on what Governor es Ensley is doing is because in this COVID uh, episode or this COVID scare, uh, Washington has led in their actions and then the other states have followed. I don't know what the connection is. Um, I really don't know, but he certainly has led, um, especially the West, but in particular the entire country. And once they have done something, the other states have followed. Um, with that being said, I am going to go through this video. It's not the entire video. It's only about four, three minutes of it, but I have sectioned off so you can understand what he's saying. I've edited it, but I haven't changed any of the chron chronology of it. I've only, um, just taken a lot of the in-between stuff out so you don't have to spend 40 minutes, um, you know, listening to it, although I would encourage you to do that. Um, so with that, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> go to his video and I will stop it from time to time and comment and show things that uh, point things out that are very concerning. We're simultaneously moving to this second initiative of testing contact tracing and isolation of people who in fact are in infected. We think of this as a, a smart weapon 
And its success will de depend on uh, both the state and local public health officials, and most importantly, individuals and families. Okay, so first of all, he says they're moving on to a second stage. He called it a weapon. And then he specifically says that it is important and, and particularly families. And notice how he says families. We need people to isolate themselves, including their household, even before test results come back. So even before test results come back, isolate yourself. The fourth is to identify the contacts and quarantine those people who've had contact who may be at risk even before that they have had a positive test. Okay, so he's talking about quarantine. He's not talking about voluntary quarantine. He's talking about quarantining them. The second uh, issue is that we will have uh, uh, testing. Uh, they will be reached by phone for the results. And uh, at that time, uh, they will be uh, asked some questions about people with whom they've had contact who might have been infected by this virus. The contact tracer, and I'll talk about who those people are, they're very highly trained people. So highly trained contract, contact tracers that'll be trained in, in basically how to uh, <laughs> connect all these dots with all these people. And the people who were contacted will not know who the person was who provided their name. You now people can call in and say, I think so-and-so was, si so -so was sick. Uh, these contact tracers will it, it basically enact these laws and these implementations, and no one will know who actually even called in. And we want to make sure that we have enough resources to get this job done. By the end of this week, we'll have 1,371 people who are fully uh, trained uh, when that is necessary to get this job done. So the people who do this work are very carefully screened. So he's just emphasizing on the people who are do doing this work. And we know a uh, large amount of this work will be being done by the uh, Washington National Guard. So with that, I'd like to ask um, Lieutenant uh, Colonel Steve Hobbs to uh, address this issue. We are so pleased to support the Department of Health and its efforts to push the voluntary COVID-19 mapping program. Okay, so I want to emphasize that this lieutenant, uh, he's actually not the head of the National Guard, but he is a senator in the Washington legislature. So he's a, he's a lieutenant in the National Guard and he's a senator. Now listen to what Governor Inslee says about these people and the importance of them uh, following orders. It's just great to have people who understand discipline and following uh, orders. It's very important. In I'm glad that we are working in combination with the University of Washington uh, for an app that could be of assistance to people to find out if they have been in the proximity of people who are infected. So they're working with the University of Washington on uh, basically, basically digitally and uh, through an app and he'll mention here hardware from Google and a Apple um, so that they can identify people um, in restaurants and uh, on the street and whatever it may be and identify them uh, as possibly having, having COVID-19 and therefore they can implement forced uh, quarantine. That app could use some hardware essentially and software from Apple and, and Google. And this is a very uh, promising technology. Obviously, if, if you have somebody who's become sick and they were sitting right next to a person at a restaurant, to be able to identify that person could be very valuable. So now he's going to end to talk about families again. And notice how he talks about those who will, uh, won't will quarantine uh, at their homes. Uh, notice, and then I I'm going to make a point after this. I wanted to talk just a little bit more about the uh, isolation for families involved in this. So that means the household, the family, will need to isolate with them. And if a person cannot do that, uh, there will be other isolation facilities for them away from their household. Okay, so if he cannot, remember, that is not a choice. The way he is saying that is basically that they will be forced. And if they cannot or will not, then there will be other facilities that will be uh, prepared for them uh, to go. 
Now, the interesting thing is, is, and this is kind of the main point of this video and thing that really concerns me, um, and it's not just about the forced quarantines, but it's also about what they are planning on doing with the children uh, 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 that are in the situation of this forced quarantine. Now, uh, I am sad to say that, um, and I'm getting here right now, that uh, when I was given the understanding uh, by someone in Washington that this was going on in Washington or getting ready, getting ready to go on, and then they said to me, and they're going to, there, there's force, there's uh, children, youth and children quarantine centers, and I said, I don't know if I believe that. I can't believe that they would actually t take the children from their parents and put them in quarantine centers with people they don't know, doing things that they don't know, putting, injecting, uh, you know, whatever into their body that their parents don't know, they surely wouldn't do that. And so I said, if you're gonna say those things, you better give me some evidence. So uh, they sent me some evidence. And uh, one, uh, and so I'm gonna show it to you, or at least I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it to you. So if you go to governmentjobs.com, um, and you'll see that the, the Washington State Department of Children's Youth and Family has posted a job. You can also do it on Zip Recruiter. Uh, and you'll see again, the Washington State Department of Children and Youth Families. And this is what the ad for the uh, job position is. Uh, DCYF, so the Department of Children and Youth uh, Family, is seeking current DCYF employees in King, Snohomish and Benton counties to supervise and support children and youth in emergency quarantine centers. We are looking for current DCYF social services specialists, three, three S's, to care for children who are either COVID-19 positive or who may have been exposed to COVID-19. There are three locations. Cedar Springs Camp Visitation Center and Bethel Church. Responsibilities include supervising social service specialists, providing direct care and supervision, uh, assessing and res uh, responding appro uh, appropriately to meet children's needs and engage in various educational and social activities with residents. I wish I was, I really wish that I was making this up. I really wish that I was making this up. I wanted to talk just a little bit more about the uh, isolation for families involved in this. So that means the household, the family will need to isolate with them. And if a person cannot do that, uh, there will be other isolation facilities for them away from their household. And uh, one way or another, we got to make sure we take care of people's health. For people. Yeah. How do you like that? One way or another, we got to take care of people's health. Who cares about their family, their children, their freedom, their job? Uh, who cares as long as they're healthy, right? Now, I want to put this in perspective. You might say, well, Ammon, you're missing the point. No, I'm not missing the point. The Washington COVID-19 death rate is 0 0.01260669. There's been less than a thousand people die from COVID-19. That's that's what the numbers skewed. You know that that's not accurate. That's what them counting pneumonia, flu, all of that. They still only have 908 people that they've uh, that have they've claimed died from COVID-19. There's 7.6 million people live in Washington. That's a 0.02126069%. But hey. And uh, one way or another, we gotta make sure we take care of people's health. Right, one way or another, we gotta take care of people's health. That's the most important thing. Unbelievable. For people who- Now listen, uh, go, let's go on and listen who, to this. Uh, who, who, for people who, uh, who, who finally won't comply, they're going to have to comply eventually. No one's looking to make this a federal crime. The Why? reason we can do the contact tracing is twofold. Uh, number one, we've stood up an army, so to speak, and we now have 1,391 uh, people who on a, just a couple days notice can be available to 
do what's necessary to do this contact tracing. As far as refusal, it just shouldn't come to that, and it really hasn't, and that would be legally enforceable. We would make sure that people know the seriousness of that issue. It's one of the reasons I'm glad we have the Guard, who are very disciplined and follow orders. I'm glad we have Department of Licensing people and the Department of Health. Um, the budget issue, as you know, uh, are... Why did he bring up <clears throat> the Department of Licensing? Because if you got any sort of idea in your pretty little brain that you're just going to take the kitties, get in the car, and take off and make a run for it, they have your license plates. They will just track you down. They will hunt you down. The asset, what they want, are the children. They're willing <clears throat> to kill off the planet to get the children. <clears throat> that's the level of threat that's why he brought up the department of licensing that's why he brought up the soldiers in the national what did he call it national guard who will follow orders these are the things that the lord warned you were coming in the preliminary that we've talked about and talked about and talked about i just invite you to tour my channel go get into it there's a lot of information it's not the tribulation yet, but it is bearing down on you, coming quickly. <clears throat> and they're telling you their plans now. Preliminary numbers is it will be at a, you know, just under $7 billion deficit for the next three years. And this can be a real challenge for us. There's also something very wicked a brewing in Washington, D.C. So Washington State and Washington, D.C. And again, I wish I was wrong. Um, but the 116th Congress, that's our Congress right now in Washington, D.C., is proposing a bill. Uh, and it is H.R. Again, it's hard to believe, but it's H.R. 6666. And it passed. Now I'm going to read you the description at the very, the very first paragraph of this bill, H.R. 6666. To authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19 and related activities such as contact tracing through mobile health units and as necessary at individuals' residence and for other purposes. My friends, I did not read that incorrectly. It is House Bill 666 and it authorizes the Secretary of Health and Human Services to conduct Related activities such as contact, contact tracing through mobile health units as necessary at individuals' residence and for other purposes. Uh, one way or another, we got to make sure we take care of people's health. Okay, my friends. This is the line in the sand. <clears throat> I have told, heard over and over again from people all across the country, especially militias, Oh, you know, we're preparing for the day that we hope never comes. Well, that day's already come and gone. It's already gone. But I hope, I hope and pray that the line in the sand is at least our children and our families. I hope that it's at least that line. And I hope that we can unite together as neighbors and friends, as people who love each other, as people who love God and stop these wicked people from what they're doing. And we here in Idaho and across the country have started something that I am asking everybody to join. I would encourage you to think this through. Do not do this. It is a very bad idea. And the way you join it is by texting rights to 80123. Don't. Text rights to 80123. 
and then fill out the form. And what it'll do is it will uh, connect you with your neighbors who have the same feelings as you do. So that they can then use that data to get an idea of what people are awake and what people are already going to fight them. And then guess what? Oh, no. Through the contact tracing, our computers tell us that you have possibly been infected. Knock, knock, knock. We're here to test you. 80% plus fail rate on the tests or the tests that are already targeted to say positive, 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 whatever. <coughs> Set up in a scam and a lie and a deception, just like your Lord told you, a big deception coming. Don't feed into this. Just trust in Jesus and the ark. He didn't leave us to be mowed over. He is the captain of our salvation, the bishop of our souls. Read Hebrews. Read Psalm 27. He's coming to help. He's not just going to leave us. <clears throat> but don't go give this information to them that they'll just harvest and then use against you. This idea that all of these people are saying, oh, just fight back. There's more of us than them. That may be true. Unless you look at, you know, all the countries together against you, then it's not. But their weaponry, weaponry, weaponry is so much more sophisticated than your little gun collection. And I'm not anti-gun. I'm just saying they have lasers and they have microwave, wave trucks, whatever they're called that can induce burning in your skin. And they have directed energy weapons. They have things. Read what happened in paradise. People were murdered in their cars fleeing. Their children and their families melted in the car. That's not normal. So this idea, just fight back, just resist. This is not a movie. Just hide in Christ. He's coming. He's competent. You say that your people of faith have faith. Uh, this is why you're going to need it. Oh, by the way, you might want to get your earbuds if your kids are in the room or have them go out. This I'm only going to do five minutes of this next video. This is going to be very difficult. But um, this is not appropriate for little ears. Now, I want to step back and take you back to what happened in Nebraska. We had the Franklin Credit Union. We had the credit union going down. We had people who had money invested in the credit union going to Senator Lauren Schmidt and Lauren Schmidt forming the Franklin Committee to investigate what was going on. He was investigating what happened to the money. Why did that credit union fail? He wasn't investigating the prostitution of children. He wasn't investigating uh, satanic activity and so on. But what did he find? As his investigator got into it, he began to bring videotapes, tapes of children who told of the things that went on in the Franklin Credit Union itself. They have a bedroom in it. He said it's probably one of the few savings and loans in the country with its own bedroom. And then more and more information began to come out about Larry King, Larry Lawrence King, a black man who sang the national anthem at the 1984 and 1988 presidential conventions. And I have a picture of him here with Maureen Reagan right next to him. Now that man brought children to the 84 convention and to the 88 convention for the purposes of prostitution. He had a big inaugural ball party in Washington DC and rented a huge house and spent millions of dollars to bring children from Nebraska there as prostitutes. And what happened when all of this came to light? The FBI stepped in and cross-examined every one of the children and told them if they did not recant their testimony, they would be liable to as much as 530 years in prison for perjury. They were grilled for hour on hour. The ones who didn't recant ended up either dead or in jail. It's definitely in my opinion, a conspiracy here. I, uh, right. have say, I have to say there's a conspiracy. Um, if not a direct conspiracy, certainly a, a loose-knit conspiracy um, by the mere fact that these uh, kids uh, 
if it's true, and I, I have a tendency to believe it is true, these kids were transported to Los Angeles, where they obtained drugs, where they were involved in ritual ceremonies. They were transported to Washington, D.C., where they were, they claimed they were molested. And, uh, and there's some, obviously some top political figures involved in this sort of thing. Here is a piece of information that came to me in the mail. Uh, this will be painful, this next two minutes. I'm sorry, but this is their sincerely held religious beliefs, practices, and rituals. It came from the investigation by the Franklin Committee of the Nebraska Legislature. It was verified in its authenticity by Republican Senator Lauren Schmidt of the unicameral of the Nebraska legislature who verified the truth and authenticity of it. I want to give you a picture of true horror. But children were not merely abused. One victim described an incident at a farm near Elkhorn, Nebraska in 1981 or 82, where a 10-year-old boy was repeatedly sodomized and beaten by older men. He finally lay crying with blood streaming from his rectum. One of the men took up a pitchfork, playfully playing with him at first, but finally sticking one tine into him. While the boy screamed and the other men stood around and laughed, finally the whole pitchfork was stuck through him, killing him. Snuff films were involved as well. Multiple streams of revenue. Sneff means death, if you didn't know that. Another young boy was taken by someone in the King Circle from Nebraska to another city and forced to perform oral sex on a man. As the abuser reached orgasm, he shot the boy in the head with a pistol, all of which was filmed. Our private investigation. That's it. That's enough. Hmm. Well... I know the natural tendency is to say, well, this can't be happening. People can't be this evil. You can't be this organized. Don't say you believe the Bible then, if you don't believe what the Bible said was going to happen about a satanic takeover, a beast kingdom, the worst human being on the face of the earth coming. Do you think that he's just going to be a sweetie? This is what these people want. You might think, well, that's just that as above, so below nation. Oh, that was a long time ago in Washington, D.C. Although, you know, there's, they, this, this is, this Pizzagate, which is like Pizzagate. And it's all rife throughout Hollywood, too. And uh, Marina Abramovich, who we have videos on her as well. She is taking pictures with uh, Jacob Rothschild, Rothschild in front of a Satan picture showing their codified union together. And much, much more could be said about that. But all of her little art exhibit things that she does that are celebrating death, celebrating harming children, celebrating this, celebrating that. And she's taking pictures and has all these relationships with Crowley and sex magic. Aleister Crowley and all the people, all the <clears throat> stupid celebrities that all say, oh, do as thou shall will be the whole of the law. Uh, Beyonce's husband. I mean, there's tons of them. They put it in their movie, uh, music. They put it in movies that they do. They wear clothing that says it. That's what the Satanist means. Do what you want. You're a God. Do so you want to harm that little child? Satan will give you stuff if you do. This is a whole industry. And people will buy children. This is a sex trade industry. So it's not unusual to grasp the concept that this is their sincerely held religious beliefs. And they are that evil. And they are the millionaires. And they don't mind enjoying a luxury life, having everything they want and living the high life, because if you do these things, Satan will give you stuff. And you belong in these brotherhoods and these sisterhoods and these 
fraternal orders, these secret societies, and you have you have the Pope <laughs> in an organization of a fake church that has been doing this to children, the Boy Scouts as well, another organization. All kinds of people have been getting away with this for a long time. This is not unusual. And you kind of just have to climb over that natural protective thing that your brain wants to do where you shut down and you go, I can't, I can't believe I live in a world where that is the norm for people. I know it's hard. The truth is not easy and most people hate it. But I would rather know the truth than to walk around in a stupor of ignorance. These senators, these governors, well, this is a governor here. These people in positions of power are toying with you until the Lord comes and says, and now time shall be no more. Meaning it's, it's time for your judgment. It's time for my bride to come with me. My sons of God to come with me, my children to be redeemed with their flesh. And it's time for the, the final seven years of Jacob's trouble. They're just toying with you now, but it's coming. So here you have Kate Brown, who is in Oregon, and she sticks the Child Protective Services on a, sal a salon owner who dared open her business. So you've got fast food restaurants and Walmarts and various places of business that can go earn money, and you have other places where they have just told you, you're not allowed to earn money because we say so. We're God. And so this woman was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go earn money for my family. Re Reformation Charlotte has been covering the far left draconian government power grabs around the country and reported on the Democrat socialists who have issued tyrannical and unconstitutional shutdown orders designed to do nothing more than boost their own ego and keep themselves in power. I don't think this is about just merely boosting ego and keeping themselves in power. I would also remind you that the head cheeto over all this that has put us in this situation is a republican so let's just keep it straight here this is not that oh just this color of people over here representing this party are bad no no it's all of they're all masons among the worst of those has been uh, the michigan governor who we think is a boy with a big old adam's apple just go study her pictures women do not have throats like that they don't Gretchen Whitmer, who's mean? And Charlotte's own North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. I know nothing about him. Both of these tyrants have acted vindictively towards conservatives who believe that the Constitution is an indisposable document. Okay, well, your, your president made a speech that we're not doing that anymore. He just used a lot of coded language and punctuated language. But um, I'm sorry, are the Republicans standing up for the Constitution? Because I've not seen that. Nobody is. And they continue to enact executive orders, just like the president has. <laughs> Bubby? That do anything but help the current thing. All they are doing is hurting families while giving government handouts to people in hopes that they'll win votes. I don't think this is just about winning votes. There's something more insidious going on here. I don't know that Reformation Charlotte, you know, gets it all. However, perhaps no governor has been more vindictive than Kate Brown of Oregon after she sends the Child Protective Services after her and her family. That's written weird. For daring to open her salon to try to feed her family. I think you should have put her name here instead of her. Anyhow, we reported a few weeks ago that the Oregon Department Health Department issued guidance for the Children's Welfare Department to remove children if parents were infected with the thing, which also ties back with the whole use of, well, the computer told me so, the, the tracing. So who's behind that? The quantum computers, the AI, which I would tell you is not just code, but that those are fallen angels, demonic entities, whatever you want to call them. Just do your studies on Gordy Rose and where he came up with the quantum computers, and he's a self-avowed witch or warlock. Those things are not human. And God's word says that all of this stuff that's coming will be in accord with the power of Satan and the mystery of iniquity. Come 
fun. That that stuff is technology and witchcraft. But they're going to be able to, whoever they want to immediately put down, they'll just go, well, it told me so. The technology told me so. You were in contact with somebody that had it, that had it, that had it. <clears throat> do, you, do you see what I'm saying? The setup? Emit Brown's unlawful, unconstitutional orders to remain shut. One salon owner tried to open her hair salon because she states that she and her employees have been able, unable to receive unemployment benefits. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. Everybody, like, clogged the system, and um, people have not received, not all of them, but a lot of them have not received their monies. So this is more of the bureaucracy saying, we don't care about you. And... Now we're going to attack and punish you if you try to go above our godlike orders, because this is how the communists think. This is how the paganists think. This is how the rich fat cap millionaires think and act. And they're just toying with you now until the Feast of Trumpets, when the time of Jacob's trouble begins. Those things are synonymous. And they're just stretching this out. And when you read Jesus's gospels about specifically the end times and you dig into all the greek it's just layers and layers and layers and layers of information and it is it is rapidly approaching i saw it today when i was reading the greek anyhow we have been unable to provide for our their families they said listen to her story below so i'm just gonna let you hear what she has to say um the main reason i'm here today is i want the public to understand what's happening to me by the government in full detail, the intimidation and the bullying, um, all because I'm trying to earn a living and provide for my family. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the timeline of what the government has tried to do to me in the last 10 days. So on March 2nd, you all know that I publicly announced that I was gonna be opening my salon on May 5th. And I was doing so to support my family and provide an income for my family. OSHA, came into my salon and informed me that they would return the next day. And if I opened, they would issue me a $1,000 citation. And if I didn't comply and shut my doors, they would then issue me a $70,000 citation. And on May 5th, we did open our doors. And on May 6th, the next day, my lease with the city of Salem was threatened, claiming that I was violating the order and therefore violating my lease. And if you can possibly believe this, on May 7th, Child Protective Services showed up at my home. They questioned my husband and I. They questioned my child without me present. They searched our home. And I've never expected such a violent, aggressive, vindictive thing could ever have been done to me or my family because I'm trying to earn a living because I'm trying to work is that just crazy or what so that's what's going on <clears throat> 